Um, for me, a soft scrambled egg is the creme de la creme of preparations of eggs. It is a simple technique and really all you need is just a little bit of eggs, a little butter, top that with a little bit of salsa matcha, which is essentially a Mexican chili oil that really elevate those eggs to levels of flavor town you've never known. Howdy y'all, my name is Edgar Rico. I am the chef and owner of Nixa Taqueria here in Austin, Tejas. Today's dish we're gonna be making is a little soft scrambled tostada and a little bit of salsa matcha. For this recipe today, you're gonna need a little bit of canola oil, some fresh tortillas, guajillo chilies, some arbol chilies, a little bit of ancho chilies, some New Mexico chilies, some fresh garlic, a little bit of Mexican oregano, specific on the Mexican oregano, don't buy the Italian apple cider vinegar, some pecans, a little bit of peanuts, sesame seeds, eggs, butter, raclette cheese. You may see it on all those YouTube videos where you see them scraping the cheese off. We're not gonna get that crazy, but it's gonna be a great accent to this dish. So it adds a lot of creaminess, a little bit of fancy finishing salt known as Malden, just a little bit of chives to give it a little greenery and make it a little healthy for you. That's all we got. We're gonna start off today by making our salsa matcha first. With the salsa matcha, some of the key things you need are dried chilies. Freshness is key with some of these dried chilies. I'm gonna start first by de-seeding all these chilies. Um, and the first dried chili we're gonna start off, it's gonna be a little guajillo. Guajillo chilies have a really nice smokiness to them. They also provide just a really bright, beautiful red color. And the reason we're de-seeding these to kind of control some of that heat because some of these chilies, especially the next one that we're gonna do, the arbols, got a ton of heat to them. These guys are gonna provide a really, really intense kind of heat. This is my personal favorite of all the dried chilies. These are anchos. Um, these have a really beautiful kind of sweetness to them and they provide a lot of depth to Mexican dishes. They also have kind of like a nice, almost like raisiny kind of dried fruit depth to them as well. This is gonna be a New Mexico chili. This one also, it's similar to the guajillo, but definitely has a little more heat in it as well. Not as much sweetness to it, but just provides a nice little sharp punch to the matcha, kind of helps round it all out. We're just gonna add some garlic to the dish. For the batch, we're doing about three cloves of garlic, and the rest of this, definitely save, don't throw it away. You can always reuse it. And we're gonna just do just a quick rough chop on this. And then we're just gonna put this in our bowl. And we're ready to go. With this salsa matcha, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some of this canola oil. Definitely recommend for this dish, I use like a neutral oil, something like a grapeseed or a canola, something that doesn't have a ton of flavor. Canola oil first. I have this pan on a super high heat. Once you start to see the first little wisp of smoke, that's when you'll know that it's time to go to start dropping the rest of your aromatics in. So you're gonna definitely wanna start first by dropping the chilies. You know, you wanna make sure too that the pan that you're using has a lot of room to bubble up. Don't be doing it in a tiny little pan because you're gonna have a hot grease fire all over your kitchen and I don't want you to blame me for that. We're gonna put in our nuts followed by our peanuts our sesame seeds a little spin action just to make sure that all those chilies in there are getting toasted and fried followed by our mexican oregano gonna give that a nice stir making sure everything in there is getting nice and coated we're gonna just want to turn off our heat and we're gonna put in the final ingredient which is gonna be the garlic the reason you're putting in the garlic at the end garlic can get bitter super easy once all those chilies are coated in there we're gonna let this cool down for about five to 10 minutes or until it's, you know, at room temperature. Just letting all these flavors right now are gonna marry together and make some really delicious salsa matcha. Once you've given this a few minutes to kind of cool down, before we start blending, we're gonna add in a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of salt. You kind of do to your own liking. I like mine a little saltier, so I put a nice little fat pinch in there. We're gonna start just loading this up, just in batches like so. Getting all these aromas and flavors like if you had a Mexican grandma, this is what her house would probably smell like, but never had experienced that. I'm sorry. Sorry for you, but you can kind of relive that right now. And blend it up pretty fine. Some people will leave it whole. Depends on where you're at. I like kind of blending it up just so it's all more consistent and you can kind of spoon it on a little bit easier. I'm gonna just end up adding in the rest right now. So make sure you get all that goodness. 
I mean, you already got this far. You've been working this hard. You don't want to throw away any of those last little bits. And it looks kind of trippy because at first you think it's almost like black, but it actually ends up being like this kind of reddish tone. You can set this stuff in your fridge. It gets better as it sits. I personally at the restaurant, we let this stuff sit for about a week before we use it, just so all those flavors kind of marry together. The beauty of this is that you got a bunch of it and it goes great on so many applications. So you can't have a tostada egg dish without some tostadas. So the main thing you're gonna need first is tortillas. Literally, we're just gonna put them on the comal. I'm gonna end up getting this probably like a medium high heat. It's not an exact science, it's not a perfect science, but you know, just give it a little flippy flip every now and then and you'll be good to go. If you don't happen to have one of these beautiful made in comals, um, then definitely use the oven. Um, the oven's definitely gonna be your safest bet. Cause, you know, we want all the edges to be nice and crispy. At the same time too, you don't want it to be burnt. Definitely monitoring. You don't want to walk away and have like a cocktail for a few minutes. You know, it's breakfast time also too. You probably shouldn't be having cocktails this early in the morning, but if you do, you know, bless your heart. But you'll kind of notice it as you start to go through. The color changing, you'll start seeing some of this nice caramelization throughout the tortilla. You might get some of those black spots, but it's all right. Like bitter kind of burnt flavors are definitely a big part of Mexican cuisine. Our tostadas are now nice finished off. There's a little, little, body to this so this thing is now ready for our eggs we are now on the last finale of this dish uh, we're gonna make some eggs this is one of my favorite things to do cooking eggs is fundamental for any young chef and cook i'm working a lot of egg stations in my day it's trained me to be a great master at cracking eggs and cooking them we're gonna whisk it up you're gonna just give it a little tappy 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 tap and then we're gonna get in there. Obviously for this, you know, since it's such a simple dish, it kind of eggs you buy really matter for this dish. You know, really getting fresh eggs, going to any farmer's market, neighbor you might have that might have a rooster or a chicken, go hit them up for some eggs for this. Cause you're gonna want, you're gonna want the nice eggs for this one. When I was taught as a cook, you wanna always make sure you're using your wrist to kind of stir. I'm just making sure I'm incorporating everything really nicely together and everything is really well put together and emulsified. We're gonna start cooking this up. Making sure your butter is cold to start is gonna be key for this, but we're just gonna drop this in. So about half a stick of butter, and you're just gonna make sure all your butter is getting nice and melted before we dip our eggs in. You don't wanna make sure it's not browning. Browning is no bueno for this. All that butter is nicely melted. I'm gonna now turn it down to a medium heat. Then once those eggs hit, it's go time. A lot of pan movement is key for this. And you'll be moving a little on and off the heat. Constant movement is crucial for this. The goal of it is to get a really small, tight curd. You'll notice it'll start kind of tightening up. But at this point, very close to being finished. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of fresh chives in there, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in there as well, a little touch of cold butter, emulsify everything together. Everything's very creamy right now. It's like the creamiest eggs you'll ever have in your life. From here, we're gonna build our tostada. And now you've noticed, you know, by cooking them a little under, they're definitely still holding on to their weight, but they're gonna also cook in here on the broiler really quick. So I'm also accounting for that. Uh, we're gonna put some of that raclette cheese on. Um, and the reason I chose raclette, obviously just because the, the way it really melts, more than anything, we're just gonna pop in our comal right into the broiler. A few seconds, 20 seconds or so. Once that cheese is nicely melted on there, we're gonna finish it off and put off the rest of our toppings, our matcha and a little chives. The hard work is done now. We have some tostadas, got some of that melted cheese on there. We got some of those beautiful soft scrambled eggs. We're gonna put a generous amount of this salsa matcha on top. I'm just gonna put a nice fat dollop right in the middle, like so. And then we're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of chives, just to give it a nice little bit of greenery. And also a little bit of Malden salt, just to give it a little bit of extra saltiness, gives you a little bit of texture as you're biting throughout the dish. That's it. We're at the best part of the journey. We get to eat the dish. You know, you can use a fork if you'd like, but 
you know, by you toasting that tostada, giving that thing a little body, uh, you're gonna be able to pick it up, kind of like a like a little pizza. Mmm, 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 mmm. With this, you're gonna get that creamy, velvety egg with some of that really fatty cheese. Um, those nice kind of earthy notes from the matcha just kind of help kind of pull that dish together and cut some of that richness from the, from the raclette. Really with the tostada, it gives it that really earthiness, just brings everything really nicely together. That is all I got for y'all today. Um, I really hope y'all had a great time making this dish as much as I had fun showing y'all how to do this. My name is Edgar Rico. I'm the chef and owner of a little taqueria here in Austin Tejas called Nixa Taqueria. Um, hopefully on a brunch menu soon, you'll be able to catch us making this in real life. Or so you don't have to make it at home if you don't want to, but I definitely recommend you try it out. So signing off, see y'all again. I'm gonna go eat these tostadas uh, in the back room, so later.